Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. Big shout out to the loyal sub Nandy for inspiring this video. And Nandy sent me something by uh, Michi X. I believe it was a live that Michi X was doing. I'm not sure if it was a live or a regular video. Uh, and uh, basically, Michi X was talking about how terrible it was for uh, Kamala Harris to compare the KKK to ICE, okay? that the perception of ICE in America is the same as the KKK. And I'm going to get into why it's so easy for white supremacists like her and others to do that. Now, for those who don't know, ICE is Immigration, Customs, and Enforcement. Now, these people are responsible for regulating who comes in and out of the country. They're a law enforcement agency. Uh, they do the whole protecting the border, who can come in, who can't, this, this, and that. Now, you have to check this video out here, right? And it's an example of how these white supremacists can use our tragedies and our terrible history with dealing with white supremacists like them, right, in America, how they can use this very loosely for their own political and financial gain or whatever they want to do at the time because these people really don't care. Now, uh, these white supremacists now, what they do, what they're doing, is they're using racism in our history or our racial terror in America very loosely. And the reason why they're using it very loosely uh, for their own benefit is because they don't have any feelings towards it or, as you can see, the two people in this video, they don't have any connection to our people or a connection to the racial terror that our people have dealt with simply because it's not them and they don't care. Now, in this video, we have two white supremacists, one of um, coconut or tan white supremacist, this Kamala Harris, and this other guy right here named Ronald Vitello, Vitello. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Now, this guy, Ronald here, he's about to become the new director of ICE, Immigration, Customs, and Enforcement, okay? He's a conservative, white supremacist American. He's one of Trump's boys, and we know what Kamala is. She's a liberal uh, Indian immigrant, uh, American racist, uh, and she's Biden's girl, okay? Now, what happened here was this guy, Ronald, had recently compared the Democratic Party to the KKK, okay? So there's two parts to him saying that. Now, the thing with that is, yes, I would compare the Democratic Party to the KKK while knowing that the KKK did come out of the Democratic Party. The KKK is the Democrats as orange juice is the orange. I mean, that is the history, regardless of how that makes anybody feel. But this guy here, Ronald, who said it, I'd compare him to the KKK as well. Because he didn't say this in a way like he was trying to say that the KKK was so terrible and they have a terrible history of doing this, this, and that and terrorizing black people in America. That's not why he said it. He said it to get a point across and to shun Democrats because he's a Republican. That's why he said it. And a lot of these white Americans are now doing this in their snowball fights. They're using racism and our history in America of the terror and things that our people went through as a topic to get the one up on each other. When in all actuality, all these people are the same. They're all white supremacists. If you put them all in a room and you put us in a room, They'll, they'll have something in common, and they will band up with them and form Voltron. This is just a snowball fight. So, of course, I'd compare them all to the KKK because quite a few of them are members of the KKK. This guy right here might very well be a member of the KKK. I mean, I don't know. This uh, uh, Kamala and Doug, they may have, you know, connections to the KKK. I don't know. I did see Obama speaking at a Klansman's funeral. Biden, they all were there giving a eulogy, talking about how this former Klansman who had the title of Cyclops was a great guy. Look into it. Now, again, this guy made this statement saying that the KKK was compared to the Democrat Party. He was comparing them, but it was only to get his point across as a white supremacist 
as these two political parties are having a snowball fight trying to impress people by saying who is the worst white person. Oh, you're more racist than us. You're more racist than us. Whatever. That's, that's what they've been doing. People have been falling for this okie doke. Now, Kamala, she knows that this man made this statement. She knows that this man made this statement about her political party saying that her political party, which is the Democrat Party, is compared to the KKK. So at this event today, on this day, she checked him. She checked him on that. Now, the problem with this video is when Kamala checks this dude, she stoops even lower. When she responds, okay, she jumps right into this uh, white community snowball fight, right? And what she did was she compared the agency, which is ICE, that he's about to uh, be the director of. She compared ICE to the KKK. And if you watch it, you'll notice that she'll touch on topics that she's sensitive about herself as an immigrant. She goes on talking about, you know, Mexicans or Latinos or whatever, you know, with the, she has the mindset and the energy of an immigrant herself when she does this, okay? That's why she goes on and starts talking about the Mexicans and things like that. Both of these people in this video are disgusting to bring up the KKK with the history that they have. Just watch this video right here, people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd, I'd like to emphasize your point. This is a hearing to determine who will be the next head of, of ICE, and so this is about reviewing the perspective, the qualifications, and the experience um, of the nominee. So that being said, um, I think, Mr. Vitellio, that you would agree. Have I pronounced your name correctly? Vitello. Vitello. Thank you. Um, I think you would agree as a member of law enforcement that law enforcement, um, generally speaking, and certainly would be the case uh, with ICE officers and agents, that um, a great deal of your power um, is discretionary. You have limited resources and you make decisions about what you're going to do, um, but you exercise a great deal of discretion in terms of how you're going to use the limited resources and how you're going to prioritize them. And then understanding that, I think you would also agree that one's perspective and their bias, if they have bias, will influence their exercise of discretion in terms of the power they have and how it will be used and implemented. So I want to return to the question that Senator Peters asked you about the statement you made describing the Democratic Party as liberal-cratic or neoclanist, which was, this, um, I think the assumption there was that you were comparing it to the Ku Klux Klan, Ku Klux Klan, um, the KKK. So you said in response to his question, you're sorry because the words caused offense. So would you not be sorry if no one was offended by your words? No, it was wrong to do. Uh, Why was it wrong? Because those are offensive words. Why are they offensive? Because they have history in this country, and, and I, I honestly did not mean it that way. But please talk about the history. What is the history that would then make those words wrong? Well, the, the Klan was a, what we would call today a domestic terrorist group. Why? Why, why would we call them domestic terrorist group? Because they tried to use fear and force to change political environment. And what was the motivation for the use of fear and force? It was based on race and ethnicity. Right. Are you aware of the perception of um, many about how the, the, the power and the discretion that ICE is being used to enforce the laws? And do you see any parallels? I do not see any parallels between I'm talking about perception. officers and agents. I'm talking about perception. I, I do not see a parallel between what is constitutionally mandated as it, as it relates to enforcing the law. Are you aware that there's a right. perception? I see no Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? Uh, no, I'm very specific about what I'm asking you. Are you aware of a perception? that the way that the discretion... I see to no I'm not finished. I see none. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Are you aware that there's a perception that, that ICE is administering its power in a way that is causing fear and intimidation, um, um, particularly among immigrants, and, and specifically among immigrants coming from Mexico and Central America? Are you aware of that perception? 
I, I do not see a parallel between the power and the authority that ICE has to do its job and the agents and officers who do it professionally and excellently with lots of compassion. Sir, how can you be the head of an agency and be unaware of how your agency is perceived by certain communities? There is a lot of perceptions in the media and in the public that are incorrect about the agency. But the perception exists, would you agree? Whether or not it's correct. And wouldn't you agree then that if that perception exists, there might need to be some work done to correct the perception. I, I do want to advocate for the workforce, uh, the, the, the vital public safety mission that they have to protect the homeland. And I think more people need to know how valuable they are to the society. Um, so I agree with you on that. Okay, so you've seen these two in this snowball fight. You get what was going on. It just goes to show how these people, how these American white supremacists are so disgusting, you know? They can sit there and take something like the KKK, who are our terrorists, okay? The KKK is a terrorist organization that, at, you know, that has the backing of federal, state, and local law enforcement and the white community. Always did, okay? Many people in law enforcement are card-carrying members of the KKK. There are U.S. politicians throughout history who have been members of of this domestic terrorist group. Who do they terrorize? Our people, my people. This is why these two right here, these two white supremacists can sit around and throw this KKK thing around so loosely because they're not our people and they do not have a connection to this terrorist group in America. Even today, the KKK is not a documented terrorist group, okay? There hasn't been a politician that has held these people accountable for what they have did to black people. There are black people who are still alive to this day who have been victimized by the KKK. There's a lot of things that have not been settled. There are KKK members who are still alive today who have not been held accountable for what they did in many places throughout America. So we got these two white supremacists here going back and forth using something like the KKK, okay, to talk about which one of them is worse or better, you know, in their snowball fight, yet... None of these people have done anything to try to do something about the KKK with their white power that they have, with the political power that they have, okay? That's why they can talk so loosely about it and use these comparisons because they never had to care about it. It's never affected them or their people. And it's very disrespectful. So I understand why when Michi X, you know, bought that up, I was like, yeah, I mean, they can do that because they don't care. They don't care. These two people that are sitting here going back and forth, we got one that compares the white man. He compares Kamala's white political party, which is the Democrats, to the KKK. She fires back and compares his organization or his government agency, ICE, to the KKK. You know what I'm saying? And when the KKK is, you know, first off, both of these people's organizations have members of the KKK in them. Many of them share the same sentiments as the KKK, okay? And they still have members in both of their organizations who are members of the KKK, yet neither one of these white supremacists have used any of their political power, white influence, to do anything about the KKK as a terrorist group or do anything to, uh, 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 to protect the people who have, vic who have been victimized by the KKK and still do. You know what I mean? And you notice that they both, when they speak, they both zero in on things that are more personal to them, like this chick Kamala. You notice she had to bring up the Mexicans and whatever who are scared of uh, whatever the ice and this, this, and that, and the foul treatment of the Mexicans because that's what she is. She feels connected to them, and that's her whole goal and what she's trying to do in her life anyway. She is one of these immigrants like them. Nothing against no immigrants. If you have this mindset, though, like them, I got something against you. Yeah, I do. If you have, you know, the mindset of a, of a white supremacist like this Kamala Harris, which is no different than this guy here. Yeah, I got a problem with you. You know, I got a problem with my own people who have this mindset. So definitely. You know what I'm saying? How you did. I mean, th to see these two sit here and use the KK is absolutely disgusting. And what's terrible about it is, is how confused and ignorant people like her have 
made my people. Okay? It's wild because many people who support this lady, right, are victims of the KKK in America. They're victims. They they have grandparents, great grandparents who were strange fruit hanging from trees, getting their genitals chopped off, getting their babies ripped out of their wombs, bombing churches and things like that. But some of my own people, they'll hate that white man there, but they'll love this coconut lady, this 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 this, this white supremacist with a tan who has absolutely no connection to her at all, to them at all. You know, they'll hate that white man, which they when they should hate both of them. They'll hate the white man because of who he affiliates with, but they'll like this other one when they should be hating both of them. Both of them sitting there, you should hate everything about them. If you are one of our people, definitely. They have my people absolutely sick, y'all. And that's what happens when you let these people, I mean these American white supremacists, define to us what racism is through the years. They told us what racism is, and now... We got so many of our people who think that racism is a white person following us in a store or saying the N word. Or you have many people now, a lot of the youth who believe that racism started with Donald Trump and George Floyd is really sick. It's a total, complete history. American history is racism. So now we have a bunch of our people walking around who don't even know what racism and white supremacy is. And they attach that to their feelings, and when, they're, when, when white people hurt their feelings, basically. They'll dislike this man here in this video, this white man, because he's a Republican, and the black community does not support Republicans, haven't in the past hundred years or more. But the white supremacists there with a tan, they'll like her and her party. We should be hating both of them and disliking both of them. Okay? Throw both of these people in a trash can. And you know what? Throw people in the trash can who think like both of them as well. Inside with them. Throw you all in the trash can. You know, these people have no respect for the terror that my people went through in this so-called great country, they call it. The debt hasn't been settled. You know, we still have victims who've seen things that people have no idea about, you know. So throw you all in the trash. That's how I feel about both of these people in this video or anybody who thinks like them or supports these two type of people. And here's the thing. Here's something else that's very interesting. It's kind of sad. It's some kind of mental detachment. It's very sad that many of our own people haven't grasped the concept that somebody could be a brown person who looks like them and just dare to just deceive you. I mean, White supremacists ain't that stupid. They ain't that smart, but they ain't that stupid. White supremacists more so bank on the ignorance or the Negro bots that they have created being stupid and ignorant. They aren't that clever. They know that they did a good enough job training Negro bots to where they pretty much bank on you being that stupid or the Negro bots who are stupid. I'm not calling you the listener, but a lot of listeners are, you know, Negro bots. They bank on you being that stupid. I mean, white people white supremacists and their systemic racism that they do, they're not that stupid, but they're not that clever. Have time in a football game, people. Have time on a, in a football game, right? Have time. One team wears yellow jerseys, the other team wears blue. One team yellow jerseys, the other team blue. It's halftime. The yellow team wants to get in the blue team's locker room to steal their plays, trick them up, and throw something in their Gatorade that's going to slow them down. You know, some kind of codeine. You know, I'm going to throw the codeine in their Gatorade water so when they come out after halftime, they're going to be moving slow or whatever. The yellow team say, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get in the Blues team locker room at halftime and do this. Still some plays. So do you think that the yellow team is going to send a guy in there with a yellow jersey? Do you think that the yellow team who's trying to get into the blue team's locker room and still plays and puts them in their Gatorade, do you think they're going to send the yellow team guy in the blue team's locker room with a yellow jersey on? Or do you think that they're just going to say, hey, put a blue jersey on to look like them and fool them? Very simple. He's going to put a blue jersey on. If the jersey is yellow, they'll all know that, oh, you're on the other team. What you doing in here? 
So he's going to put the blue jersey on. That's the same concept of how these white supremacists work with these tan white supremacists, the, these chocolate or brown dip white supremacists like your Obamas and your Kamalas. That's what they've been doing for their white daddy for years and whoever else. You know, there's many more. But those are your two major ones because that that dude Obama just ran. I mean, then you, now you have this coconut uh, Kamala. Many of our own people haven't even mentally evolved to understand that concept yet. Can't, can't even understand the concept. OK, oh, well, they're going to put somebody in a locker room with the same color as us. Because if we send the yellow jersey, people, oh, what you doing in here? Just have, you ain't on our. Do you know there's a lot of our people who don't even understand that yet? You hear some people say, oh, but he's black. Oh, but she's black. You're like, huh? But again, I do also think that a lot of our people are playing dumb because the truth doesn't fit into this fantasy that they want to have in their life. And many of our people are willing to die off of fantasy. They, they really don't care. Their mentality is complete fantasy because a lot of them feel that that's all they got. But I do understand and believe that there are a lot of our people who still don't even understand that concept of get one of them to do the work for us. It's very simple. Get somebody who looks like them that ain't even got to be one of them to do the work for us. It's that simple. I mean, uh, there are a lot of people that don't even understand that concept yet. And a lot of people are faking because it messes up their dream and their fantasy. They got these Peter Pan mindsets. But anyway, people, that's what these white supremacists are doing now. They're snowball fighting and they're squabbling and they're trying to attract people of color or black people by showing who's the more. Oh, look, you did this. You're a racist. You did this. You're more. When they all are hardcore white supremacists. OK, and they can sit around and use something like the KKK, which is our domestic terrorist and compare it to things they want to compare it to because they're not from us. They're not us. They don't have a connection to it. And both of these people you've seen in this video are disgusting savages, just like the KKK. Anyway, easy.